Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the mechanism of electrophilic substitution in benzene. You should then be able to contrast this with electrophilic addition in alkenes. In a previous video we looked at the structure of benzene and if you haven't seen that video then you need to watch it now. Remember that benzene is a cyclic aromatic compound with a ring of six carbon atoms and each carbon atom is also bonded to a hydrogen atom. As we've seen, in benzene, one electron from each carbon atom is in a p orbital. These p orbitals overlap sideways, and the electrons delocalize over the six carbon atoms. This forms a ring of electron density above and below the plane of the carbon atoms, and scientists call this a pi bonding system. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that this system of delocalized electrons is energetically very stable. To break this system would require an input of energy, and scientists call this the delocalization energy. So in almost all of the reactions of benzene, the pi bonding system of delocalized electrons is maintained. Now as we've seen, benzene has a region of high electron density above and below the plane of the ring. This means that benzene reacts with electrophiles, in other words a species which is attracted to negative charge. Before we start looking at how benzene reacts with electrophiles, I'd like to recap the reaction between alkenes and electrophiles, and we looked at these reactions in the Year 12 Organic Chemistry topic. I'm showing you here the reaction between the alkene cyclohexene and the bromine molecule Br2. Now the bromine molecule does not have a dipole. However, the double bond of the cyclohexene molecule is a region of high electron density. That's because the two electrons in the pi bond are localized between the two carbon atoms. This high electron density repels the electron pair in the covalent bond of the bromine molecule. And this means that the bromine molecule now has an induced dipole. Now the pair of electrons in the pi bond of the alkene are attracted to the delta positive bromine. So in this case the delta positive bromine is acting as an electrophile. The electron pair from the cyclohexene now forms a covalent bond to the delta positive bromine atom. At the same time, the covalent bond in the bromine molecule breaks, and the pair of electrons move on to the delta negative bromine atom. At the end of this stage, we have a carbocation intermediate and a negative bromide ion. Next, the electron pair on the bromide ion is attracted to the positive carbon atom in the carbocation intermediate. This electron pair now forms a covalent bond, and we have our final product. In this case, the product is 1,2-dibromocyclohexane. Okay, now benzene reacts differently to alkenes. Remember that benzene has a ring of carbon atoms, and each carbon atom is bonded to a hydrogen atom. Now in benzene, the electrons in the pi bonds are delocalized above and below the whole ring of carbon atoms. This means that the electron density between any two adjacent carbon atoms is less than in the double bond in alkenes. So because of this, benzene cannot polarize a bromine molecule and induce a dipole. This means that benzene does not react with bromine in the same way as alkenes. We'll be looking at the reaction between benzene and bromine in a later video, and you'll see that for this reaction to take place, we need a catalyst called a halogen carrier. So how does benzene react with electrophiles? Well, as we've seen, benzene cannot induce an electrophile. This means that we tend to use a catalyst to create an electrophile with a positive charge. I'm representing the electrophile as E+. In the first step, a pair of delocalized electrons from the benzene molecule are attracted to the electrophile. This electron pair forms a dative covalent bond to the electrophile. The effect of this is to partially break the delocalized electron structure around the benzene ring. We've formed an unstable intermediate. You'll notice that I'm showing the hydrogen atom attached to the carbon. You'll see why in a second. Now because we've partially broken the delocalized electron structure, forming this intermediate requires a relatively high activation energy. And for this reason, the reactions of benzene tend to be slow at room temperature. Next, the electron pair in the covalent bond between the carbon atom and the hydrogen atom moves down into the delocalized electron system. This means that the delocalized electron system is reformed. 
At the same time, we release a hydrogen ion H+. So as you can see, when benzene reacts with an electrophile, we get a substitution reaction. The electrophile has substituted for the hydrogen. So benzene reacts by electrophilic substitution. In the next video, we look at the nitration of benzene.